Yeah, my name is uh, Vico Perrine. I uh, actually lived both in um, Bukidnon, Mindanao, and in Manila as well. I went to high school in Manila and University of Manila. But uh, both places, Manila is Manila, I guess. You know, it's, it's fun, it's a good city. Um, and that's where I went to high school. But uh, Mindanao is different. Mindanao is, is, is a special place in my heart. Growing up there was, uh, was different. Uh, you really are exposed to the rawness of the Philippines. I think that Mindanao still has most of the Philippine culture versus the other regions. Uh, this true original culture of you know both the Muslims and the indigenous people. You also have some migrants also from the north. Um, so Mindanao really is, is the raw part of, of the Philippines. It's exciting. Uh, you'll see a lot of people still walking around with blades, not for, not for combat purposes, but more for work. It's something that you see every day, uh, you know, and uh, so that's that's growing up there was amazing. I actually ended up here because uh, I, I met uh, my one and only true love, my my wife Emily. She's from North Carolina, mm -hmm. so we decided that uh, she likes to be closer to home. And uh, of course, we have one little girl who also thought that maybe it'd be good for her to have an education here in the U.S. Ilustrissimo um, actually is the belated art of Grandmaster Tatang Ilustrissimo, boy based in, he was from a, a famous escrimador based in Bantayan, Cebu. Uh, it's his, uh, let's say, his own take of a, a belated art which he used to defend the island, also to defend himself a lot when he was living in Manila, in Bondo. So it was an art that he kept close to himself uh, till maybe he was in the 70s, and that's when, you know, um, some masters, including one of my masters, who was able to actually learn from him. And I learned from, from my master, Master Tupa Ricketts. And then after that, it was from Master Tony Diego. But it's the art of, uh, the fighting bladed art of uh, Tatang Ilustrissimo. So when you strike at number one, watch my hips. Well, one is like, you know, it's, it's a cliche, right? It's a bladed art. You can just say that very quickly. But the real difference really is the, the ability to find the opening rather than see the strike. And the ability to hit somebody before that person can even think of hitting you, you're already hitting him. And second, three, there's a couple of things, right? The other one is footwork. Um, I've, I've seen all, all, all FMA styles have footwork, but when you have two people with, 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 wep with an edged weapon, with adrenaline that's re really high, you, you have to be able to watch your footwork and your distance and measurement. Um, and that dictates a lot of what what happens, you know, the dynamics of your striking, your positioning. So um, that's what, one thing that's very unique. But the consciousness of fighting with a blade, uh, someone with a blade and you having a blade is, is, is very unique for Ilustrissimo. Because before you can think that you're hitting someone, Tatang is already hitting you. And what did, the question is, what did I give away? What did he see? In, in, in me, I, didn't, I thought I didn't do anything and he's already hitting me. And then, you know, that's, 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 that's the art of KI, really. There's a saying, don't look at the weapon. Don't worry, it's gonna come to you. Um, well, of course, you know, I had the, the Taekwondo stuff when I was younger, you know. Um, but with, with, the thing with Unique, with Bakbak and Mr. Uh, Master Trooper is that I learned first like the Sagasa kickboxing system. Um, and then I learned uh, Western boxing. Um, and after about two and a half years, or even one, two years of that, there was dribs and drabs of the Illustrissimo side from Master Tony and, and himself. But, uh, but maybe, uh, let's say, that was, I started in 92, maybe 94 is when I started fully with a, with a weapon in my hand. So I started off uh, joining uh, Bakbakan International, which is a brotherhood of uh, martial artists. Uh, so the head instructor there was uh, Master Christopher Ricketts, a uh, dear master. And since it was a brotherhood, we also had other masters from other disciplines there. Uh, we had Master Tony Diego, uh, Alex Ko, Master Alex Ko from the Ngocho Kun. Um, we had, of course, uh, Master Edgar Sulite, and then other masters as well would come in there. Um, but those were the three main uh, the masters that we would be uh, training all together in one roof with. And then, unfortunately, I joined in 1992, so Master Edgar already had moved to the States, but I would see him when he, when he would come over. But yeah, that's uh, Master Tupa Ricketts was my primary uh, teacher. <laughs> it's, it's very different. Um, 
you know, a lot of the, the good um, teachers, the coaches there, are Arnold Nars was based in the Philippines, who was directly in his from Master Tony Diego, who I also hold dear in my heart. Um, it's quite different uh, in the sense that the teachers who are outside of, of the Philippines um, have to adopt to it's kind of like the Western culture of learning. So there's more of a systematic way of approaching KI. Uh, whereas uh, when back in the Philippines, it's still a little bit of its where it was from. You just start, you know, learn applications here and there. We're starting to create some drills to better understand um, the uh, absorb the, the art for, for new students. But that's the difference as well as one major difference really is that in in the teaching of KI there in Illustrissimo there in the Philippines is that it's there's no gym. It's outside, it's in Luneta Park, if you're in the elements, you sometimes train in the rain. Of course over here in the West, you know, you have a nice gym and closed. You know, so those are, those little things change a couple of, of ways of approaching and teaching the art. Step back one, heel down two. I, I'm more of a, let's say a legacy passer on uh, teachers. I, I, I teach, you know, um, it won't be my primary way of, of, of uh, living. Um, I teach because I, I, I respect my masters. I really want to pass on their legacy um, as well as I love it. I love the art. It's a hobby. It's I can do it on my own. Unfortunately, you have to teach so you have a partner. That's primarily where I, I, a reason why I teach is I could have someone also swing at me properly so I can move. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my intention, but my intention really is to continue the legacy um, with quality. So it's not the number of people, but maybe just maybe even a handful, maybe less than five people would be good for me. Maybe hopefully when, when you know, one of, one of our, my students can actually go and compete and, 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 and win. Um, that's one of them, but that's, if that happens, that happens. But in the end, if I start to see that one of my students, one, even one student gets, gets it, um, and it's, it takes a while to understand Illustrissimo that way, but I'm happy with that. I see, I see KI, and I'm very optimistic. I see KI as a, as a let's say, a family. Uh, people who understand that Illustrissimo, they understand that uh, it's a primarily a plate of art that's kept in its integrity. Um, its core principles are maintained. Um, and I can go deep into that. Um, the movement is definitely clear for all deep, all practitioners across the board. And there's a, let's say, a, a standard that in spite of there's different KI teachers and KI groups, that there's a standard they maintain and everybody respects that standard.